why it is imperative for the youth to be positioned to take advantage in their quest to contribute to the blue economy on our continent. Let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Programs Coordinator. Thank you very much. Um, so the blue economy is really important to um, African economies. Um, out of the 54 African countries, 38 of them are actually coastal states. And then 90% um, of our import and exports, that is in the African continent, 90% of our import and exports are transported by sea. And so the African continent is really, really important in terms of regional and international trade. Mm. Um, the maritime transport alone, which is also a key pillar of the ocean economy, mm. contributes about um, a trillion per year. And then the overall assets of the ocean economy mm. is estimated at around 24 trillion. And so you, you look at all these details, this information, and then you realize that the ocean economy really has a huge potential to contribute to development of our economies. Mm. Now, down to Ghana alone, um, 7.5 billion of the, sorry, 7.5 million mm. of the population are found in the coastal states. Mm. Um, with the oil and gas sector alone, it's, it has generated about 4 billion um, US dollars mm. since 2010, since the commencement in of, in Ghana, okay. since commencement of commercial activities. 10% mm. of the workforce in Ghana are actually found in the fishing sector. Right. And that's about 4.5% that is accounted to the GDP. Mm. And so you realize, when you look at all these data, you realize that the ocean economy or the blue economy is very, very crucial to addressing our economic challenges. Mm. And so the youth really need to stand into a position where they can benefit from the bene uh, some of the potentials of this blue economy. Mm. Um, let me go back to the UN Ocean Decade Action for this year. Um, so the UN Ocean Decade Action for this year, the mm. team largely focused on technology and the use of scientific um, data. Right. When you look at the qualities of the youth today, we are more digitized, we are innovative, and we are more diverse. And so we understand how to use data, how to use digital platforms to solve or to come up with solutions that can address issues. And so when you look at the qualities of the youth today and you look at the challenges that the ocean economy faces, I think it's, it's, it's about time that we focus or we, can, we leverage on the qualities of the youth in terms of their skills to address some of these challenges. So I think that the youth really stand in a position to address or contribute to um, solving some of the challenges and then benefiting from them in terms of creation of jobs for mm. livelihoods and then food security. That's mm. benefit from the ocean economy. Mm. All right, so let me come to um, uh, Stephanie, uh, Madam Associate Director, and find out from you, have you identified key areas uh, in which the youth can, through which the youth can play any roles? Yes. Particular areas? Yes, certainly. And, you know, just to give the context of that, mm. we have to first and foremost understand why the youth are so important in this dialogue to right. begin with, right? Because that is what we can use to map out the areas in which they can support. Okay. So one of the unique qualities of youth, um, first and foremost, is the ability to ask the right questions. Right. You know, I keep reiterating um, over and over that if you think back to at which stage in life normally we are more curious, mm. we are more driven to ask questions is when we are young. Right. But then the interesting thing here is that asking the right questions is the first step mm. to creative solutions. So as youth, we really have this unique role to play, not just because of our innate ability to ask the right questions mm. that lead to the right solutions, but also because we are positioned in an era that is you know, merged with digitalization and all of that to right. bring us to the fore of addressing mm. some of these crucial issues. So another aspect to look at in terms of the role of youth is the fact that the blue economy concept in itself goes beyond just the mere recognition of the, the resource wealth of the ocean, right. right? To a clear understanding of the need to um, sustainably exploit these resources. Mm. So it's not just about um, pushing for the exploitation, but pushing for the exploitation in a manner that is ultimately sustainable and that ultimately preserves ocean health mm. and ecosystems. Mm. And that's where youth also come 
to play a very crucial role because right. you you realize that youth are often at the fore when it comes to ocean advocacy, ocean activism, because we have for us a planet that is really ours to run and inherit. Right. Right. We stand to lose a lot from any other harmful effects when it comes to, you know, unsustainable use of the ocean mm. space. And so for that reason, we find youth taking the fall. And so that's just one of the areas that youth can focus on right. in, in terms of um, enhancing ocean sustainability and environmental protection of the maritime domain. Mm. And then as Lawrence mentioned, of course, we can also start to harness technology and innovation um, towards not just... Um, you know, purposes of shipping and navigation, but mm. towards elements of maritime security. Right. You know, elements of cyber security, for instance. We anticipate that youth should be at the fore of driving innovation, innovative solutions to right. addressing cyber security issues in mm. the maritime domain. Industry. All right. So let me come to you, Mr. Programs Coordinator, and find out from you. If you look at it, the issue, if you look at issues currently and how the maritime industry is faring, um, do you think that the, the youth already are kind of like involved the way they should oh i i in the scheme of things i i don't think they are largely involved mm. um when you look at the agenda uh, excuse me is it in, in terms of africa or ghana in terms of africa in Ghana. Terms of I, africa, mean, yeah, I think yeah. um the youth are not largely involved mm. in 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 the developmental agenda when it comes to the blue economy or mm. the ocean economy um in terms of initiatives that young people have taken themselves, a, a lot of times we've seen them in conservative or conservation initiatives mm. and some of them trying to develop um, digital platforms to support some of the industry, especially in the maritime transport sector. Mm. But in terms of um, actively involving young people, I, I think we've not been able to do much mm. in, in that sense. And so I think that what really in, um, largely informed our decision or our plan to launch the Blue Carrots and Business Expo last year. Okay. So the idea was to get young people to come into a, um, the same space with industry uh, leaders mm. to understand what the blue economy is, what the maritime industry is all about, yeah. the opportunities and then the challenges, mm. and how they can also engage and contribute to further development of the industry. Mm. But if you ask me if young people have been involved, I would say not... We've not really done much, but mm. I think um, we, we are on our way. We are, we are making efforts, and we will get there. Mm. Stephanie, do you think, what, what do you think are some of the reasons why um, we, 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 have, we don't have a lot of the youth involved in this particular industry on I, our continent? I think to a large extent it's because of the, the narratives around issues surrounding the, the blue economy. Most often than not, youth... Um, believe once they are involved in other disciplines, they might have no role to play in the advancement mm. of the blue economy. And that's one of the things that um, the Gulf of Guinea Maritime Institute has been trying to tackle. Mm. We, we intend to spread the message that regardless of you know, your background or, or your, your interests, there, there are ways in which these can all be effectively merged with advancement of the blue economy. Mm. So for instance, just as an example, you'd have um, a young individual who has interest in accounting. Yes, they may be passionate about the ocean. Yes, they may come to a recognition of the resource wealth of the ocean space. But then most of the time, they have no idea how to merge this interest with the advancement of the blue economy. Mm. You know, But we try to push to bring um, young individuals to a, an, the understanding of the fact that if you're an accountant, for instance, you can begin to look at accounting for the ocean space. You know, there, mm. there are elements of blue economy management that are, are centered on ocean accounting. Um, if you are, for instance, um, someone who's into psychology, a mm. psychologist, you can begin to look at what factors influence people's disregard, total disregard for the blue economy. Mm. So there are several different ways in which, regardless of your career path, we can manage to merge these with, mm. with the advancement of the blue economy. Mm. I think that is one of the major roadblocks right. to, to this issue of getting youth actively involved in the blue economy. Mm. Once they begin to understand that you can, you can get involved in the blue economy regardless of your background or expertise, then we can begin to see more massive youth participation in advancing the, the blue economy.
Mm. Um, uh, Mr. Programs Coordinator, I just want to find out from you, at the Gulf of uh, Guinea Maritime Institute, you have what you call the Blue Economy, uh, the Blue Mentorship Program. Uh, tell us about that and how that is uh, supposed to engender and whip up interest uh, in young people to kind of like, you know, take up challenges or roles in the maritime industry on our continent. Okay, so the Blue Mentorship Program is an African Maritime Accelerator Program. Mm. It is intended to engage young people or encourage them to engage in the blue economy sector and also provide support to young people that is in their careers, um, in their students' mm. life, and then their business um, journey. Mm. So this, this blue mentorship program was supposed to, is supposed to sustain the efforts of the Blue Careers and Business Expo. Mm. So we are largely focusing on um, students and um, entrepreneurs and people in maritime businesses and then early ocean career professionals. Mm. So we have, um, we have part of the mentorship program. We have the mentor pairing where young people are paired with um, industry people right. so that they can directly benefit, they can directly have um, exchanges and then get to know what really the issues yeah. are. And then we have the, the Blue Speaker Series where we will have sessions where we discuss the state of the blue economy in terms of the business opportunities and then the challenges. Then we move on to the, um, to the support hub where out of the challenges, mm. we, we look at how we can develop solutions from the challenges and then migrate them or transfer them to become startups or um, incubators. So that is the whole idea of the Blue Mentorship Program. Mm. In, the large, in the long run, we are hoping to develop a maritime incubator where we can house so many uh, maritime businesses and startups mm. that can contribute to the industry. Mm. And so we are also focusing on young people, especially females as well, just, um, to, to, to include inclusiveness and then diversity. Mm. And so that is the whole idea of the mentorship program, to encourage young people to engage in the blue economy sector. Mm. And we believe that when this is done, we will begin to create jobs for young people and then um, they can get to understand the blue economy sectors as well mm. and the benefit that is accrued to it. All right. So let me come to Stephanie. Uh, we're talking about how we can build a resilient blue economy for the African continent. And I just want to find out from you what role our current leaders have to play uh, to ensure that we achieve this particular ambition or goal. It's, it's interesting, you know, we, we talked earlier about the fact that youth have a unique role to play, but this does not in any way negate the role that the older generation, that the existing leaders have to play. Mm. Definitely one of the most crucial things that, that, that industry leaders can do is to begin to um, create this form of understanding in youth of the importance of the blue economy mm. and, of course, of how to harness Ghana's vast blue economy potential. And we believe that this can largely be done through mentor-mentee engagements, which is why the, the mentorship program is something that the Institute is really focusing on. Mm -hmm. um, beyond the issue of mentorship, of course, um, the industry leaders, of course, have, have been able to gather some lessons you know, from their years of experience in the, in the maritime industry. Mm -hmm. And it's important that these lessons are shared with younger generations so that they can begin to understand what paths to navigate, what sort of loopholes they might encounter, mm. even as they venture into blue, blue businesses. So I think what, what is very key is to offer young individuals um, the guidance and the, the, the necessary expertise that they need mm. to be able to, in themselves, also advance their efforts towards building a blue economy, All a right. resilient blue economy. Okay, so let me give you 30 seconds to wrap up. Uh, what would you have to tell the youth who are watching us uh, tonight? We want the youth to understand that the blue economy is not a sector that's just limited to a few individuals. Mm. No matter who you are, no matter what your background is, you can actively play a role in advancing the blue economy. So mm. we definitely like to call on all youth who are interested to keep an eye open on our website to check out our blue mentorship program. Mm. And of course to call on industry leaders to partner with us mm. so that together we can build a resilient blue economy for Ghana mm. and Africa as a whole. Or what's the website address? Our website is www.gogmi.org.gh. Gogmi, G O G M I. Gogmi.org.gh. All right, I'm sure some questions will come through. When they come, we'll forward them to you, uh, elicit some responses from you, and then we incorporate that into our bridge version, which will be aired on Ghana Television uh, on Wednesday at 8 30. So please be, be on standby for us as far as uh, sending the messages to you. Uh, 30 seconds. 
Well, um, so still on the engagement of young people, mm. um, the Gulf of Guinea Maritime Institute is launching a membership program mm. for young people. So um, they can check the website as well and then sign up for the membership. Mm. And then we can engage them on other programs um, that the institutes run. Great. 